Quiet, please. In exactly 15 seconds, we'll be on the air. We need emotional content. I said emotional content, not anger. That's it. How did it feel to you? Let me think. Don't think. Feel. On the finger, or you will miss all that heavenly glory. Do you understand? Never take your eyes off your opponent, even when you bow. What's up, my ninja? We are back with yeah, the yeah, Wing yeah. Clan Ninjas podcast. It's your boy, the Kaze Kage C Win. It's your boy, Day Win, a.k.a. Day Mac. Yes, sir. Thank you for uh, listening last week. You know what I'm saying? Um, this week, uh... Hold man, on, can I, can I say something real quick? Please do. Man, appreciate all the love, all the supporters, everybody that shared it, everybody that listened to the podcast. Shout out to everybody, oh. because we coming on up in this podcast world. We making a name for ourselves. That's a shout out to my boy Sosa. Right, right. He already know what he did for your boy. Hey, but just keep it lit. Yeah, yeah my little brother, man. I think he got music uh, coming out pretty soon. Uh, I just dropped the uh, a surprise album on your ass uh, today or whatever. DM us for links. You got to listen to the podcast to get these exclusive links. But it's uh, Ninja NXNJA is out right now. We going to go ahead and get into this thing real quick. So, um, so Jay, what's up? So it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of craziness uh, going on in the industry right now. You know, like uh, um, today is September thirteenth. It is the let's see, let me do let me do math real quick. It's kind of late. Y'all gonna have to excuse me. Let me see, twenty. It's the twenty second anniversary of um of Tupac's death. Well, yeah, well, alleged death, and they could be in Cuba for all I know. I, I don't be knowing. Moment of silence for Pop Death for everybody that actually grew up on his music. That's that moment. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fast moment. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah. One time for Pop, man. He, one uh, time. You know he uh, influ- he influenced the game. You know what I'm saying like uh, undeniable. But and as we look at like. You've got Cardi B and Nicki Minaj going at it like some cats in the alley. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it made it makes you think back to, you know, the we grew up in that era with the East Coast, West Coast rivalry and everything and um, the casualties that we uh, they well, came out of that, you know what I'm saying? Like you had you had Pac get shot and then then a few months later we lost uh, the notorious B.I.G. We lost legends, you know, and um not to say that this uh that the type of patty cake type beefs they have nowadays uh will result in something similar. But man, there comes a point where you gotta get back to what's important, you know. So instead of choosing to focus on all that controversy, we we wanna um, you know, dedicate, you know, the cast a little bit to uh to those following soldiers. We had Mac Miller uh pass uh within this past week. Legend. Legendary, you know, um Two guys and the interesting thing, Jay, Jay, you brought up um uh, the hand? Oh, okay, that was the game. I was about to say, oh, what the fuck was that noise? Yeah, you know, the whistles go <laughs> off, you know what I mean? We had to have that sound effects on the side. You know, we coming up, I told so, y'all. We and, coming up. Yeah, you playing playing at 2K right now, but we we'll get to the games a little bit later, you know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, you 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 mentioned earlier how they were making some comparisons um between um 
Pac and Mac Miller and before before you you heads get crazy. Oh yeah, and they, know, hey, with, hey, yeah. they already yeah. already finished up down throat right oh, now. Really? Soon as you said the comparisons, ain't nobody talking about Mac Miller's about that thug. Like yeah. it's it's a good it's a good reason. Stick with stick with us real quick. Stick, like, yeah, stick like, with go us, go man. ahead and explain, Jay. The reason why he said that and the reason why I said that is because Mac Miller got a catalog of music that he has not released. Like, he's been sitting on a million dollar record deal for over three to four years. So he's been making music. His last album just came out last month. And it's been like a four year gap where he got over 20 different, 20 different albums that he possibly could have dropped at any time with various artists. They say he got a whole album produced by Pharrell. Like, I'm interested to hear that just I mean, he got albums with Ab Soul. He got albums with some of everybody, but he hasn't released it. And then, considering he didn't release it while he was alive, it'll be kind of like, would they be doing him bad if they released his music now because he's dead? Maybe he didn't want people to hear the music. I don't know. What do you What do you think about that whole thing? Oh, uh, now, like it's always funny because we we've had a lot of. Um, you know, like uh, legends, like just pass uh, over the past few years. Like we, we've lost motherfuckers like Prince and Michael Jackson and uh, Aretha more recently. Uh, people like this, you know. And the thing that you see immediately following these passings, of course, is like the legal battles because like the estates are pretty much turned over to the families at that point. So yeah, just a little bit of um, music education, so like your family can inherit. You know your royalties, like your the, um, if you own just like how you own property, things like that. Your um, your family can inherit um, you know your your, your music if um, if, if it's if it's left in your will. You might want to be one of those assholes that like in your will. You say don't let nobody have my shit, bury it with me, or whatever. But um, now it's pretty much up to you know Max next to Ken what happens with those records, and it's looking like they um. Can I inter- yeah. interject for a second? Oh, yeah. What's blessed about Mac Miller, not saying it's a good thing, but his parents, both of his parents are still alive. So I'm hoping that the majority of whatever goes on with him go back to his parents because that's who made him. You know what I mean? I mean, that's unfortunate that they lost their child at a young age, but it's just, you know, at least his parents are alive. So the fight shouldn't be so aggressive, I feel. But you know, with money on the line, it ain't no telling how the lawyers and the label and if he have to pay the label back and did he pay the label, did he get that 10 mil back to the label? I mean, I don't know, you know, I'm just, you know, speculating. So, you know, we just here yeah. talking right now. You yeah, know? Cause just like just like you can leave assets behind, you can leave them debts too. So exactly. there's no telling like where he was with his obligations as far as that um that contract went. So it's gonna be interesting to see like how everything unfolds. But um he wasn't exactly one of these types of dudes I would say was wrapped up in a lot of controversy and other things like that. So hopefully we won't see like the messy uh you know, like media shit that um, you you may have with like families like the Jacksons and yeah. other ones who notoriously had that kind of stuff going on. And um, which brings me to my next uh, question, will slash point. Um, we talk talk legacy, like um, as far as a legacy goes, what what kind do you feel that uh, that Mac is leaving behind? Like the legacy from. From my experience with Mac, you know, I listen to his music, you know, I like Mac. He's he's hip hop. He's, you know, one of those guys that like to keep it hip hop and, you know, evolved into, you know, making the R and B and all that stuff. But what well, Mac will be remembered but by the most, I feel, for his humbleness. Like, that's what everybody is so sad about is how nice and genuine this guy was to be passing away. Mm-hmm. Because they feel like it wasn't a better person in the world than Mac Miller from what everybody is saying about him. Like, he was a really awesome person. So his legacy is, you know, just his music going to speak for itself. Because like I, t- like I was speaking earlier, he got over 20 albums that he hasn't released yet. So, I mean, uh-huh. we might 
we might know more about Mac Miller after he died than with before, you know, while he was here. And that's crazy to say, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's a sad thought in and of itself because, you know, like, um, you know, they always have that saying where, you know, why we give uh, flowers at the funeral or whatever because uh, cause regret is stronger than love. And so it's like, it's some people who have never or will never receive flowers in their lifetime until their funeral, you know? So we we, we got to be sure to give people flowers while they're still here, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and so transitioning, so when you talk about um, rappers who pass, um, Tupac, his, 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 his legacy was undeniable. Um, for those of you too young to remember, you know, um, Tupac was um, was shot uh, four times. Um, it was September sixth, if I yeah, September sixth, uh, nineteen ninety six, um, and then um, and then allegedly passed seven days later um, on the thirteenth. So you know, so there, there, there was a lot of um, conspiracy <coughs> and controversy uh, surrounding that whole situation. Unlike with big situation, um, they were, there, there was all kind of funny things that happened around there. Like they, um, nobody really got to see him in the hospital after that happened. Um, they were supposed to broadcast um, his funeral, among other things, and all this um, magically got canceled. So, that, <laughs> so like there, there was just a lot of stuff around that that left people to speculate whether or not dude was even actually dead. Because I mean, if anybody was gonna do it, if anybody in the game could pull it off. It'd, It'd be, be too far. far. The, yes. the one dude that was sitting in jail reading a book about faking your death. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, yeah, exactly. So, you know, goes the show. Legacies, man. What are you leaving behind? What, what are you, are you doing for the world? What are you doing for this society? Mm, I mean, I know a lot of dudes, uh, you know, they get off on the whole thug life idea, but in, at the end of the day, Pac was one of these, um, these guys that built a movement, you know, and um, and then we get into, we were talking a little bit earlier about how the, um, the debate about who's the better rapper and um, all these things. And then, um, like we were saying earlier, like there's certain factors you have to, that come into play. Like you have to assess um, what it is. Cause like, I like Pac and Big for entirely different reasons. Like I grew up more, more so on the Pac side of things. Right, right. And, um, you know, and came to appreciate Big more later on, but then I like him for entirely different reasons. Like, if I want to hear some, some real shit that with some feelings or whatever else, then, you know, I'm going to go to Pac, but then if I want to hear somebody say some slick shit or uh, speak, spit some game, you know what I'm saying, that's Big. And so you have the type of listeners out there. Not not everybody is the well-rounded type of listener that, you know, has, has ears for everything. Like, you have some people that all they listen to is is a hustle rap or reality rap. You have some of those that only like the characters and things like that. So there's there's an audience for everybody at the end of the day. But um, I, I just like to keep like an objective kind of um, view on these things so I can appreciate things for what they are. You know what I mean? Right. Same way here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So we um. All right. We're gonna go ahead and get into our next segment. Cause I know you people have things to do. Wrong. You want to sit here and listen to this wearing clan all day long. I right. know you do, baby, baby. All right. So, um, I think this is a perfect time to see what's up. Jay with the game. Oh, Jay with them games, man. So this week. I'm actually playing 2K while we're doing this, but you know, shout out 2K. You already know about that if you, you like it. But game that I've been intrigued with since Super Nintendo days, Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest. I mean, Square Enix. Yeah. Square Enix, one of their original titles that helped them get to where they are now. So, what can I say about Dragon Quest 7? And I can say that over a hundred hours of gameplay, first and foremost, Shit. but for them people that's tired of them games that you can beat in a week. Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, man, shots fired. <laughs> boom, boom, you know. Everybody gonna want their money back, you know, wait for the downloadable <laughs> content. But Dragon Quest, man, you're... the thing about it, though, the thing 
about it, it's your tr uh, traditional RPG where basically it's turn-based, where you pick the attacks, you level up, and blah, 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 blah. And that's where you probably are thinking the flat will get. But if you one of those people like me that enjoy a good gameplay, just a good game and a good story and a good environment and a good character design, good music and all that, you gonna enjoy this game. And not to mention, for all you Dragon Ball Z heads, Akira Toriyama designed every character himself. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you can see a lot of similarities in some of these characters. Like, one of the main characters actually looked like Super Saiyan Blue Goku with the hair. <laughs> so, it's, it's crazy. So, if you're one of those people like me that just nostalgic and love, love retro games and them still having a legacy for 10 years and 20 years, you need to pick up that Dragon Quest XI. Oh, yeah. A shout out to Akira Toriyama uh, taking the reins back over at Bird Studios. Um, you know, um, I won't even get into the anime. Yeah. You know, I won't get into the anime because, like, um, this dude at the end of the day, he's a legendary uh, manga artist. Right. You know, um, I've been a fan of Akira Toriyama. Like, of course, uh, they consider Dragon Ball series the gateway drug. You know what I mean? But then, um, you know, I went back and I checked out like Doctor Slump, and um, of course, and 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 then I just I just found like the actual comics, like they just had like a certain uh, certain funk to them that um that don't always uh, translate into the anime because you gotta keep in mind too, like Dragon Ball series, like these these shits jumped off in like the '80s, so it's like animation was what it was back then, and then even though like um you had some of the more beautiful. Uh, animation in like Dragon Ball series and early Dragon Ball Z but um and the good storytelling things like that and of course it became so popular and then you know what happens with series after they get get a little popularity you know what I'm saying they, they want to keep up with the trends and change things like this and you know and then there's there's money involved but um as far as like the the pure roots of it like dude has a un unique style um I know people people like to try to compare, you know, Toriyama and the Dragon Ball series and shit like this. They like to try to compare it to other animes. But what you have to um, remember too, he had that um I believe is is he he did Manzai style uh manga. Like you had two basically two different styles. You had like the the stuff that was a little more serious, but then you had like the gag type stuff that was that was intended to be funny and then that's where he started out with the um with the Doctor Slump, and so a lot of that that same comedy um, and wackiness is uh, basically translated over into the original Dragon Ball series, and then he started getting to the martial arts. And so by the time you get to Z, that's when um, they were kind of they wanted to do a serious version. So you have like you have a lot of animes that do do something similar to that. Like for instance, um, the Z equivalent would be shipping in in, um, in Naruto, where you have like the initial um, version of the initial storyline, and then you got the serious storyline that comes through it, where they uh, they progress like a little ways uh, into the future. The characters get a little older; they may have kids mm -hmm. of their own. Um, speaking of which, um, you know, you know, series I always felt did a very interesting um, uh, take on that. What's that? Um, JoJo. Hey, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, like those oh, uh, series, cause, cause that tripped me out that that he had like three whole generations um, that they went through in that series. Like I'm like, oh damn, it's over already. But then it, the next, the very next episode, you jump to to his uh, like either son or grandson mm -hmm. or whoever else, and that that was nuts. Like entire stories, like back to back, that feed into each other. And I always thought that was pretty cool. Man. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I enjoyed it too. Empires and it, it was crazy. That it took a long time to finally uh, sit down and watch that joint, but it was. I said the only reason I knew about that was because of the game they put out. What was that on? Was it Dreamcast or GameCube way back when? Yeah, it was old. A long time ago. And I was like, I was like, what the fuck is this? A little trill. I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see what that's about. All right. Yeah, man. They had a fighting game and everything for. Speaking of um, fights and conflicts, um, well, before we get into our uh, our fight fight, what is going on with Serena? 
Man, yeah, out here just keeping 100 with people. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I guess she feeling disrespected by what people are saying to her and she feel like she has to lash out. Or maybe, you know, I don't want to get into the controversy or maybe she just being blackballed. Maybe they tired of seeing her being at the top for so long and they just, you know, want to just see somebody else. Yeah, just to give you guys a little bit of background, they, uh, you know, they're spreading a little bit of controversy because of uh, Serena's outburst at, um, at one of the judge of whatever the fuck they call him in, um, in tennis, but uh, dude, yeah. dude was calling her out on some bullshit call or whatever, and she finally just like kind of snapped yeah, on him yeah. a little bit. And um, and so so do you do you feel like they've been kind of um, they're kind of targeting her and, and bullying her a little bit there? Or? I mean, you know, like, like uh, I was speaking on earlier, the whole cat suit thing, she wore a tennis outfit and they felt like it was too revealing for her. So, I mean, I mean, all tennis stuff is kind of skimpy attire. I mean, I mean, if you just got more of it, I guess it'll look a lot more appealing, I guess. If you're looking at it that way, I guess. So, you know. Yeah, guys. You know, if, uh, some, some of you may not know this, but um, I'm actually like a certified uh, Qigong and Tai Chi instructor. So I used to um, always instruct at like these little country clubs and stuff. I probably couldn't have gotten into any other way uh, for <laughs> obvious reasons but um you know and I and I just kind of look like you know you got these these women these tennis women they they running around in like these little ass skirts mm-hmm. and whatever else and you know and um and then I guess the only reason that it looked appropriate on them was because they had no ass <laughs> I mean I don't want to keep it that clear cut, but yeah. hey, you're right. They ain't have no ass. It's I mean, like an IHOP round there. It's just pancake ass <laughs> all over the place. And then you get you get this big booty Serena out here. They've been trying to figure out a way to defeat this big booty Serena for, for years, like over a decade. Yeah, really? You know, and um, and I think they're just getting to this this point where they want that new hotness to come in and, and, and you know, take them down, take them out. And so, like, uh, not, not to say that she wasn't in the wrong here, there, or whatever yeah. else, but then you you can kind of see where um, you had this sport that didn't really want them there to begin with. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then now it's getting to that point where they're like, okay, well, well we've uh, we've had fun. It was a nice run. Uh, now we're done. You know, so I don't know. But uh, I don't know. So Serena, I think she's finally gotten to her boiling point where it's just like, there's, there's no tell like this. Now, this is just like the outburst we saw. We saw like God knows how much stuff that they have to endure. I know, um, you know, you've heard about how they when they go overseas, and in some cases, you'd have people like calling them all kind of niggas and everything else. You know, they had right. to, you know, they had to work through that, and then you know they became champions. You know, because uh, pressure builds diamonds. You know, right. saying saying kites fly higher against the wind than flying with. You know what I'm saying? So uh, man, there's no no telling how much she's been holding in, and you know, to the point where they finally just like snap. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, true fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can't judge somebody off of one little mishap, or if, even if it is, it's not even really that serious. You know, people yell at the refs all the time in other sports. So you know, this is what it is. Why is such a big speculation when it's Serena? You know? Yeah. Yes, indeed. All right. Well, still, I don't know why I got your threshold so high on this thing. Like, if if you didn't know, like, it's still early. Like, we we ain't we ain't super balling with the podcast yet, so I got to do all the engineering and shit while we doing it. In case you had noticed, um, now we got two mic, two of them, uh, two of them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? So we sound we sounding good now, and I can do all kind of tricks and stuff with it. We we ain't got nobody to thank for that, but but so. My, my my little brother. God God bless your soul. Hey, all right, cousin. Right. Shout out to all you. All right, all right. So um, it is time for everybody's favorite fight, 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 fight. So if you if you if you're just now tuning in and you ain't you ain't been hanging with us, um, fight, fight is where we take uh 
we take a character or just anybody really, and then we um we pit them in a in a in a death battle against um another character or individual. Um, so um th- this this week it was my turn to pick uh somebody and for um Jay to pick an opponent. So I chose uh chose from from the follow up, the sequel to the Kanikuman saga. You got the legendary kid muscle yeah, from, right. from Ultimate Muscle. <laughs> right and then who who's he battling against, Jay? Man, no other than the nature boy himself, Rick Flair. Woo! Kid <laughs> uh, Muscle versus Nature Boy, Rick Flair. Oh my Jesus! What did we come up with? What's going on here? All right, so, so the, uh, so the, so the wrestling league, um, that Kid Muscle is uh, notoriously a part of. Um, purchased by Vince McMahon. That's right. All right, because because Vince, Vince got the paper. Yeah, Vince always got the paper. You know what I'm saying? And so naturally, that means that um, all of their franchise, uh, you know, favorites are um, now being brought over. So um, you got got all your your kid muscles. You got your your Kevin uh, Mask. Yes. You got. Uh, <laughs> You got Wally Tuskin. You got <laughs> you, you got all the favorites that are that are now part of this huge uh, new WW Federation. You know what I'm saying? And so um, miss your cheeks, miss your cheeks. You know what I'm saying? So so you you got, you got more more ass in the ring. You know what I'm saying? And so you know uh, you get you getting down to your championship match. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know. Uh, Ultimate Muscle, notorious for you know they, the 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 soap opera that happens in the background where you got the drama between between the heroes and the villains, and with with new um with new mergers come new uh, rivalry. That's right, that's right. And so um you know Kid Muscle, you know he try to try to keep it keep it humble and whatnot, but there's this belligerent motherfucker in the background. <laughs> talking shit so much shit in all his matches <laughs> and the spotlight goes over to the crowd and lo and behold it's none other than nature boy Rick Flair and, and he and he come, <laughs> comes down through the crowd <laughs> comes into the ring strutting strutting talking that good <laughs> shit take the mic Snatch the mic. Snatch that mic, and then, then he ready to throw down. All right. So how? So how? So how does this play out? What? What? Let's let's lay some. Uh, let's lay some foundation. Okay, so so what we dealing with today? Man, we dealing with the dirtiest wrestler of all time, Rick Flair. Again, possibly the most. Pull it out your ass. Yeah, <laughs> but considering the. Danger factors. The kid muscle really pulled this off because Ric Flair is a threat, but with his dirty tactics be enough. Yeah, so so we get so we got a uh, situation. Okay, so you got kid muscle, right? Who has the um, who has the power of ultimate muscle? You know, it took a lot of. Um, you know, a lot of work for him to finally unleash that, you know what I'm saying? So you had you had a bitch ass nigga in the beginning of it where, you know what I'm saying, he always hoe up and, you know, mm-hmm. couldn't come through. But then eventually he just became that dude, you know what I'm saying, and uh mm-hmm. started following his father's legs. Then you got the trickster. Rick Flair don't pay, don't play fair. You know what I'm saying? Let me let me do that again. Rick Flair don't play fair. That, that was a tongue twister. Yeah, it was. Them bars though. Woo! <laughs> but he, and so you you pretty much got one of these uh, like Batman and Joker type situation. Like, I don't know if the Joker can necessarily fight. He probably got a little more trill later on. But <laughs> that nigga always had a trick up his sleeve. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And he and he been hanging with the best of them. So so with with Rick Flair's trickery. Be enough if if Kid Muscle catch him with one of these Kaniku Busters or oh no oh it's over 
<laughs> Rick Flair can hope that he can do some type of trick and hopefully put him in that figure four and submit Ed Russell. Other than that, oh my goodness, he's not surviving an attack. Um, he's not surviving that slam. It's over with. He ain't gonna survive this. I mean, not in the realms of dying, but in the realms of oh, wrestling. Oh, he's one, two, three. He counted out. You know, it's uh, over he, with. He's, he died. He's pinned. Cause, yeah, he's pinned down. Because <laughs> Ultimate Muscle Boy, they take you to the ceiling, so they. So if he come down, he gonna get that Owen Hart R.I.P. Oh but, man, oh man, that hey. was still too soon. We wouldn't be like in middle school. Oh man, hey, that holds a dear part of my heart because we ordered that pay per view and I didn't that think was it was sad. real. Like, I didn't think it was real. I couldn't believe that shit. That was whoa. But the thing about it, like, man. he had to keep making that money. This man, your old dog, he had to keep it going. Like, like you know that that. Pretty much um, that argument of wrestling that wasn't real, it got really real, like real quick, like right then. But uh, so so can we can we go ahead and say this fight fight goes to uh, Kid Muscle? Oh, without a doubt. All right, Ultimate Muscle uh, prevails again. Sorry, Rick. Ooh, I'm in his limousine driving ass. <laughs> Man, I used to just wait for this man to say nigga. Like, I knew it was coming. Like, he used to talk to that country boy. Shit. Uh, but I like the guy. I like Rick Flair. He was like my favorite too. entertainers of all time. Like, he like he knew where the line was. He didn't cross. He went. He, he wasn't he went like uh, Agent Orange up there in the office. He knew He knew where the line was. <laughs> he came over there. He, he, he held his dick over it. But he never crossed the line. Never crossed that line. All right, so, um. Hey, yo, Jay. What's up? You know, I. I don't see nothing wrong with a little ninja bars. With a little ninja bars. <laughs> That's what has been in the mind all night, right? Ninja bars. <laughs> Which we will get back to. After we throw it to the legendary Dojo DJ, Groove Sensei, who's gonna hit you with that new hotness. Take it away. I would like to introduce. It's a smash hit. Baby, baby, baby. Hey, what's going on, Wing Clan Ninjas? This is Groove Sensei, broadcasting live from Radio WIND. And I'm gonna take a break from dodging asteroids to bring you that new hotness from across the galaxy. We got this joint, Killish, by Kill Switch, featuring Roy Visions. You can follow them on Instagram, Roy Visions, that's R-O-I-V-I-S-I-O-N-S. And kill switch the dog. K I L L S W I T C H D A D O N. Sky's on the track. Whoa. Go. Let me get it. Go. Around my wrist, next cell match my fish. Think I won't steal your bitch snatch. I don't get no fuck. No fuck. I don't get no shit. I think I'm no for killing shit. Think. Don't make me flip the switch. Don't make me flip the switch. I'm on the K around my wrist, next cell match my fish. Think I won't steal your bitch snatch. I don't get no fuck. No fuck. I don't get no shit. I think. I'm no for killing shit. Think. Don't make me flip the switch. Don't make me flip the switch. Nah. Bad bitches, I got all that. All that. Come in the bitch like a run that. Like who that there? Who that there? Fuck around and beat your blue black. I'm the truth, niggas better learn that. Want money get power, bitch, earn that. Pick the burner to you like a perm, bitch. I'm killing these hoes. Burn niggas been ducking my shells, make them feel rap. I yell. All the way up from my neck, this niggas been feeling my help. Beat the pussy till it's crying for help. Help, help. What? Dive in and now I'm trying to myself. Self, self. Beat it up and then I put it on shelf. These hoes don't make I be feeling myself. Bad, bad, bitch, I'm fresher than L. The king of this shit, how the fuck could you tell? Know I'm the shit, know you can smell. All this swag on me, yeah, you know I'm the shit. Bruce Lee couldn't fuck with the kick. Check out the way that they hit. Check out the way that I speak. Moonwalking walking got me feeling like low. Neon guts turn the car in the low. Push the gas until they go in the low. Hope I don't push into you. Fiercely fast, splash on the gas and I dash. Zooming right by your ass, they got me your bag. Polo stepping up the swag. Check out the ice and I dash. 
Hundred K round my wrist, neck Still match my fit. Think I won't steal your bitch. Snatch. I don't get no fuck. No, no. I don't get no shit. I know for killing shit. Don't make me flip the switch. Don't make me flip the switch. Hundred K round my wrist, neck Still match my fit. Think I won't steal your bitch. Snatch. I don't get no fuck. No, no. I don't get no shit. I know for killing shit. Don't make me flip the switch. Don't make me flip the switch. Oh shit, I guess he back again. Tell a friend, she should tell a friend. The menage twice, what's happening? Just tell your friend not to tell a man. Cause she be getting freaky Friday. Shot the soul out, switching body. But this nigga big, Chris Brown, a pussy. That's a thought behind me when I kill the pussy. Come in the game like a whole nag. Who's in your head like a snapback? Realest nigga, you just half bad. Don't put it in words, you just half ass. I'm gonna take a nigga off the map. Can find a nigga like a boogle map. Do, 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 shoot him down. Silence like not a sound. Hold on, I got a stable at home. The man on the moon when I'm all in my zone. Cutty, I guess we ain't kids no more. Push it the teeth and I'm like combs. Now that's good music. She see the two chains, how she choosing? Keep up, don't lose it. The way the chains been, it confuse, confuse. You ride or die, the fuck is you choose? You live a lie, the fuck is you prove? I was born a lion, I'm king and I knew. Leave it with scars, eternal bruise. Kill switch, yeah, he do it. All gas, ain't no losing. Kill Roy, what we do? My nigga don't know about you, but I got a hundred K around my wrist, neck. Still match my fit. Think I won't steal your bitch. I don't get no fuck. No foul. I don't get no shit. I know for killing shit. Don't make me flip the switch. Don't make me flip the switch. 100K round my wrist, neck. Still match my fit. Think I won't steal your bitch. I don't get no fuck. No, I don't get no shit. I know for killing shit. Don't make me flip the switch. Don't make me flip the switch. All right, that's a new hotness. We back. If you just now tuning in with us, uh, all the way at the fucking end, this is the Wind Clan Ninjas podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, uh, now I believe it's time for some Ninja Boys. Oh, Ninja Boys. All right, so uh, like we normally do around this time, I'm going to go ahead, uh, reach into the bag. Let's see what kind of beat we have uh, in here. Let's see. I think we did some kind of laid back last time, so we're going to think we'll do something, something funky, uh, co-starring President Trump. Let me see what this is right here. And you can uh, tell them yeah. uh, to go yeah. themselves. Uh. You see, Win and J in the place to be. Yeah, you already in the MAC. You know how we do, you know how we get down. We were here in the Mac Town. Keep it spinning just like James Brown. Yeah, everybody loves the sound. When we get in front of when we on the track, let me go and rewind that back. Let me go and take you back to 96 when I fucked this bitch. Big old dick. I may have only been in third grade. But she still said she was like my fate. She liked the way that I got down. Yeah. So she made me drown in hey. that P to the U to the S S Y. Why? Because I got to take it. Yo, but I gotta like Nike. Got a fresh check, cause I know I gotta like me. Yo, but I'm a jab at the beat. Just testing my opponents to see the surroundings. See where your head's at. See where your hands at. Understand the battle. It's more of the mental. Understand that we going through, and we don't know how we gonna push it through. Bounce back down. Simple as flow. Come and let you know that we coming through the door. It don't matter if you got guns or not We coming with our swords on our back like that, uh Jumping on them donkeys No shreks around us, can't be a hunky Hey, shout out to my white folks Cause my girl white too, I love y'all Yeah, left, right, up and down That's what I like to see Everybody want to be The dub by end to the D We ain't clean shit You know how we get in this bitch With that ninja flare Make you go woo in here. Goddamn, we doing what we gotta to come through and make it real hotter. Uh. And if you ain't down with this, you can go and suck my dick. And you can go and lick the nuts. Dirty slacks. I'll go ahead and bust on your butts. I don't care. Goddamn, why you got so much hair way down there? You need the shave. Goddamn, let's go to a rave. <laughs> Let's hold up my nigga B3. You can't see me. You need to go out about this fucking CD. The new ninja tape. <laughs> that shit sounds sick like rap. 
<laughs> but on top, that shit right there, grapes is all I eat. I need nutrition. I need these bitches. <laughs> yeah, they be swishing in them booty shorts. I'm about to pass this shit, of course. Yo, but we back dick in. Don't even know how we got in. Back though, probably got a couple bounces slipping. Cause the way we do creeping, real ninja shit, you don't know. We can do the back though in the rodeo. Got these motherfuckers going crazy in the dough, but I don't really know what I'm saying no more. Kinda high off life, way I really do it. Don't really care, we real, real stupid. Ayy, with a new flow coming at y'all. Think a new style, ayy. With the electric sound. Something like digital underground But I don't hump the hump Unless you got a big fat rump Yeah, let me go ahead, pump And tell you how we get down around here We get up to get down That's that side that you get from the wind And when I get done, I'ma do it again Freestyling, I don't need no pen Fuck you, dog. You don't ain't no men You some mice, fucking mouses In our houses Might just douse you With a little acid Burn you alive You can't fuck with me, I don't jive that's some 70s talk for your ads. Yeah, you need to go back to class and learn who you is fucking with. I'ma come and fuck your bitch. If you try to mess with us, Jay is Chris. <laughs> Leave him with the slit wrist like the mummy on the Eminem CD. Burn you up like VD. You need to go and get your PP check and then get a PP check. <laughs> Woo! Crazy <laughs> ass sounds like that. Like Just that. fucking around, crazy ass sounds like that. Like that. Oh shit. We yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo, we back, we back. This is Ben. This is Ben Wet Clan Ninjas Podcast. I'm C Win. And I'm J Win. And we decided out. check us out next week. Make sure that you follow us. Make sure you subscribe, download that that uh, podcast, keep on sharing it. Uh, Ninja uh, was well, no longer the mixtape. Ninja uh, album is out now. Check it out. Hi, hi. Hit us up. All right, peace.